Help me praise him. God bless you and good evening and another glorious day. Uh, this is another Freedom Fact, Faith Fact Friday. And we thank God for you and your presence. Uh, we thank God for that another introductory selection. Help me praise him. Amen. That's what we do. We praise him with everything we have. We praise him. Amen. In our in-presence worship, we praise him online. Amen. That's a E praise. Hallelujah. And so come on now, everybody can continue with your lips, with your heart, with your service. Amen. With your giving and certainly amen with your uh, amen, your adoration. Come on, bless God. And we thank God for you joining the Israel and Grace Temple Safer at Home online worship. We're live tonight. Uh, amen. This Friday night, uh, the August the 5th. August 5th. Uh, again, here we are the first week of August. And if August goes anything like those other seven months, it's going to be like over before you know it. But here's what we want to do. We want to make sure, make sure we do all we can, all we can to give God our very best. You know, there's more to do. A whole lot more to do, not only in 22, but 23, 24. We got a lot of work to do. Uh, we're getting work done by the grace of God, both Israel and Grace Temple. Uh, amen. Both uh, in our facilities and our communities and our ministries. Uh, we praise in God. Things are happening. And I want to thank each one of you. Amen. For your prayers and your support. Uh, amen. For the ministries of these two great congregations. Amen. Um, again, uh, we have so many, so many things to thank God for, so many wonderful things um, to do that he has assigned us, as we mentioned. Uh, tonight, we're going to be continuing in a while. We're in our study. Get your Bibles ready. Get your Bibles ready. We're going to be back in tonight, our Faith Act Eschatology, the study of last things. And we're going to talk about just real quick, not long today, but Matthew, uh, excuse me, Revelations chapter six, Revelation chapter six, and then we'll go into that study later. I just want you to get it ready. We're not going to read it right now. We're not going to go, but I want you to know where we're going. Uh, but before we do that, let me share with you uh, uh, so many um, who have presented petitions to God. You've had your prayer request. I want to let you know that God hears the cries of his people. God is sensitive and attentive uh, amen to the spirit. He, to each cry, he, he, the Holy ghost, amen. Even interprets our groans with words that cannot be uttered. So whatever you're going through, I want to remind you again today that our God knows and he cares and he is able to deliver. Uh, in, in, in the way of announcements, just, uh, another reminder we've been telling you, and I don't want you to forget about it. Please don't forget that starting this Sunday night and this Sunday is first Sunday, the first Sunday in August. And as every first Sunday, amen. For 87 years at Israel for 75 years, amen. Just about in, the, in a couple of weeks, 75 years of, at Grace Temple, every first Sunday, we have the Lord's Supper. And so please prepare yourselves. If you're not going to be present with us in in-person worship, amen. Make sure you get your, your communion supplies, uh, get your communion uh, bread, amen. Unleavened, unleavened bread, unleavened, unsalted, uh, amen. And the fruit of the vine, amen, that you might take it with us, amen, whether you are in your house or in the, the Bible says in Acts chapter two, they went from house to house, breaking bread, amen, breaking bread and preaching the word of God. So I thank you for allowing us to be in your house. Thank you, amen, for joining me in my house, uh, amen, as we share with God. But on Sunday, as many as can, I'm inviting you, I'm asking you, the doors of the church are open, let's meet at God's house in August, the first Sunday in August for communion. And then later on that evening, and remember, we're going to start early. We're starting early. You'll be back at 3.30. At 3.30, yes. Uh, amen. Because we want to start and want to eat and want to do everything we can. We began Vacation Bible School, VBS. Amen. I'm looking for all of you to bring the children. Amen. Bring the neighbors. Uh, amen. Bring the neighbor's children. I'm telling you, just amen. And not only that, but Vacation Bible School is for everyone. We're going to be starting at, at four o'clock. We want you to come because we 
we're going to eat first. Uh, and then all throughout, all throughout the entire uh, week, Monday through Friday, we're going to begin at 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, the Vacation Bible School is at 6 p.m., uh, amen. And we're going to be able, uh, and we begin classes. So you come at 6 p.m. and you'll be able to enjoy a wonderful meal uh, coming from work or those who have been home. Amen. Come on, take advantage of this. We really, really want to share the word of God. We want to feed from the from the bread of life, the word of God. And then we also want to bless uh, all of our attendees with, uh, uh, with something to eat. So uh, we want to look for you starting Sunday night. We had a great time at Grace Temple, but this is at Israel Baptist Church, 4501 South Compton Avenue, and beginning at uh, four o'clock on Sunday and six o'clock Monday through Friday, it's Vacation Bible School. Uh, DJ DJ Cupcakes asking y'all to get ready. DJ Cupcakes looking for you. Amen. And we're looking for you. My prayer is, is that on Friday, we would have had uh, enough of our uh, saints who will be in a person and the saints who will receive Jesus Christ. My prayer is, is that we're going to have opportunity to baptize on Friday. I'm, I'm giving instructions now. We're going to run the water. Amen. Even if we don't have nobody to go, amen, we're going to run the water. If we believe we're looking for rain, we're going to put up the umbrella. If we're looking for souls to baptize, we ought to fill up the pool. And so I'm filling up the pool, y'all. We want to thank God for uh, those. So if you are desiring Amen. And you know you need salvation or you already saved and you wanted to go to the waters of baptism. You've never been baptized. Uh, we encourage you to join us for Vacation Bible School. Come on to church Sunday at Grace and or at Israel. Uh, and we'll be happy to lead you uh, into the ways of God uh, and to be obedient to the commands of Christ where he says, be baptized, believe and be baptized. And so thank God for, for that. Um, and then, amen, the second Sunday, VBS the first Sunday at Israel, but the second Sunday in August, August the 14th, amen, Grace Temple will be celebrating 75 years and celebrating with a banquet, an in-house banquet, uh, not in-house just for members, but we're gonna be doing it in the fellowship hall in the Fellowship Hall, a banquet concert, amen. And it is exciting. The cost is only a $25 donation. And this is for the uh, these uh, church anniversary, amen. Of course, we're asking every member of Grace Temple to give a dollar for each year. And if anyone desires, members of Israel, of saints, friends, uh, any of our partners that want to be a blessing, whatever God puts upon your heart, Amen. We got a lot of work to do. Uh, amen. We're remodeling right in the middle of remodeling and every gift, every blessing makes a big difference. So be a blessing both in your givings at Israel and also at Grace Temple for the Lord loves a cheerful giver. So the tickets to the banquet are only $25. Uh, amen. But I want to tell you third Sunday, you don't have to worry about anything. We just want you to bring your gifts. We're going to have morning worship. Amen. In the street. Not just taking it to the street. We're gonna have we're gonna praise God right in the middle of Gramercy Place. Amen. Gramercy Place. Amen. And we're looking for you to please join us. Uh amen. Now here it is. You see, uh, we talked about the anniversary services, and you'll see all of the participants that are gonna be there on the second Sunday uh at the banquet and praise celebration. But on the third Sunday, on the third Sunday at Grace Temple will be the community the community fair and carnival, uh, immunizations for children who are getting ready to go start school or going back to school. Amen. Amen. Immunizations. We've been talking about vaccinations for COVID-19, but we've been taking immunizations all my life, all of our lives. Uh, perhaps most of us, even as children, they wouldn't let you go to school unless you had your polio vaccinations and your mumps and your measles and all the other vaccinations and immunizations. And so these immunizations are still necessary. Uh, and thanks be unto God, on August 21st, we will be offering them to all children uh, who desire to have them. So parents, uh, amen. We know the vaccines and all that stuff for the adults and the COVID, amen. And that has turned, tended to be a success for so many who have not experienced the severity of illness because of vaccination. We want to do the same thing for our children. Amen. Polio was a was a serious epidemic in the United States, but vaccinations against polio, which now are part of our regular regiments of uh, immunizations. Uh, and so we want to continue to do that so we don't have a, a amen, uh, an occurrence uh, like that we had suffered many years ago. 
So that, that's enough of the wellness stuff. We got a lot of wellness things we want to do. Keep wearing your mask, y'all. Keep wearing your mask. Keep washing your hands. Keep washing your hands and uh, stay sanitized and stay safe. And let's be a blessing to others. Show you care by what you wear. Uh, and that means to keep keep your mask on. All right. So we have a lot of those things that are coming up. We thank God for the core. Uh, core uh, amen, who are part of our community and made a difference both at Israel and at Grace Temple. They are sponsoring the events. When we talk about the community and health block party, uh, amen, they are sponsored. It's sponsored by CORE. Uh, so that means everything is free. We've got a free food trucks, amen, free uh, backpacks for students who are going to school, health screenings, uh, amen. Uh, all the other things we talk about, the immunizations, amen. It may be others. We're also going to be doing adult checks, blood sugar and blood pressure checks. And there are a lot of other uh, things that we have planned, but we need you. Amen. Bring your neighbors, bring everybody on that third Sunday, August the 21st. We'll be there starting at nine o'clock in the morning with worship in the street. Amen. And throughout the day, we're going to have other entertainment as well. Uh, as well as all of the other events, we're expecting a live jazz band. Amen. A live jazz band all in the middle of the street, y'all, because we want the community to know that the churches, Israel and Grace Temple, we are alive and well, and we're doing the work of God in our neighborhoods. So God bless you. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to that. Um, uh, having an exciting time in all of these, our upcoming events. Amen. Be there or be square. Be there, be square. Uh, we just know you You uh, save the date, make time, make yourself available. Now, let me go into, uh, I want us to begin in prayer because we have so much to pray about. Uh, there are so many things, even today, several services. Uh, amen. We're praying for Carol Warsaw and the loss of her dear husband, Sylvester Warsaw. We're praying for the the Dimes family, amen, that uh, the funeral services today in Israel, amen, for David Dimes Jr. Uh, so we're praying for their continued family. We're praying for, uh, amen, Larethia Sardin, the loss of her her grandson, praying for Vanessa Williams, call her Van Easy, amen, and Jair, and praying for uh, the entire family, for AJ, uh, amen, for the loss of their dear uh, grandmother, and for Vanessa's sister, amen, member of Israel, Jackie. Uh, and so y'all continue to pray for the loss of these uh, family members. When an, one of our members hurt all of us, all of us feel the pain. Uh, and so we're asking, but not only uh, at Israel and Grace, but we're praying for all of our church family uh, and those who have suffered uh, and have lost loved ones. Um and so we know, we know that earth has no sorrows that heaven cannot heal. So if you don't mind, just pray. Let's go into prayer and then we'll get into our study tonight. Uh, amen. Our faith facts eschatology. Amen. But uh, let's ask God to help us, to keep us, to comfort us. Uh, and then give us wisdom to understand his word. Shall we pray? Father God, in the name of Jesus, I thank you. I thank you for this day. I thank you for the privilege of prayer. I thank you now because you have been such a good God. You look beyond our faults and you met our needs. You tended to all of our, uh, Father God, all of our needs. You have tended to all of our concerns. And the things, O oh, gracious master, where we have yet to see the answer, we stand depending on faith, believing that you may not come when we want you, but you have always been right on time. So, Father God, as you are an on-time God, I pray your blessings now upon every saint, upon every soldier, upon every one of our senior seasoned saints. Bless them, Father God, in their health. Bless them in their mind and their strength and their finances. Bless them, O oh, gracious Master, and, and the aches and the, and the pains. We ask in the name of Jesus that even in the dimming of the eyes and when the hearing, Father God, seems to uh, fall short, we ask in the name of Jesus that your love will ever increase. Remind us that we belong to you and that you are ever with us. 
I thank you now for our babies. Bless, Father God, the new little ones that are being born and brought into this world. We pray that you would bless them and keep them and cover them with, Father God, protect them from the dangers of germs and viruses and bacteria, but, Father God, from the evil of this world. Protect them, O oh, gracious Master, from those that would do harm. Father God, those that will abuse and misuse children. We pray in the name of Jesus for every entity of our government. Father God, bless everything from the community. Uh, Father God, uh, watch block party, Father God, to those White House cabinets, to the Supreme Court, to the Congress, Father God, of Senate and House representatives in the name of Jesus in every state, in every Capitol building, every governor, every mayor. Father God, in the name of Jesus. We pray for wisdom. We ask now in Jesus' name that you would continue. Oh, gracious master, the, open up our understandings. Help us to see you more clearly. Help us to love you more dearly. We ask in the name of Jesus that you'll help us to continue to call on you in all sorts of weather. Father God, in good days and bad days and struggles and in triumphs, we ask now that you be with us and remind us that if it had not been, but for your grace and your mercy, we would not have made it. Father God, we come declaring that we never would have made it without you. And so we ask now that you'll help us to grow stronger, wiser, better. Help us to be, Father God, the believers that you're calling on in these last days. Now, as we come thanking you and preparing for this study tonight, Father God, as we thank you for your word, that you show us what is yet to come, as you showed us where we came from, we thank you for it all. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that brings our, the word and brings things back to our remembrance. We thank you for your word. We thank you for your presence. Bless us tonight. Father God, for everyone who's joining us on the stream, mm -hmm. I ask your blessings. I ask, Father God, that you will keep and that you will comfort and you will cover mm -hmm. For those who are celebrating birthdays, Father God, thank you for every year of existence. Father God, those who are, suffer, uh, who are celebrating anniversaries, we thank you, Father God, for those that you have joined together and those who have overcome uh, great feats, Father God, of, of retirement or of, of working, Father God, or of recovery, whatever it is, we celebrate with them and we thank you. Now, bless us now tonight. Keep us as only you can keep us. And if you do, we know we're well kept. We thank you now and we believe you and we stand upon faith in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. I, I know what prayer, I know what prayer can do. Uh, amen. Got a chance to sing that song on Sunday. I hadn't heard it and hadn't sang it in a long time. Amen. The choir pulled that one out. I'm telling you, uh, Mary left what used to sing. I know what prayer can do. Prayer brought me through. And I'm telling y'all, let's keep praying. Thank you. Thank you, everybody, for praying for me uh, and for my family. And I thank God uh, for all who have prayed for all of us from the very earliest moments of our lives. All right. Uh, I hope you got your Bible. Let's get ready to get into the word today uh, just to get you caught up. Uh, amen. Uh, our desire is to keep the stream streamed. Uh, amen. We don't want to be long. We don't want to burden you and wear you out. Sometimes it's hard holding that telephone. Sometimes it's hard looking at the screen on a monitor or even if it's a television. Amen. We don't want to spend a lot of time and we don't want to waste any time. So let's get into the word of God. All right. Revelations. You got your Bible? Get your Bible. I got I got mine. Amen. I got mine. If you got yours, get it out. Get your Bible. Amen. And I need you. If you got your pencil and your paper, amen. You got your highlighter and you got whatever you need to study. Uh, because we've been talking about eschatological, uh, eschatological events. Eschatological events simply means eschatology is a study of last days are the events leading to the last days. Uh, amen. We've discussed and we've talked about where we are now today, presently in 2022. We are, I believe, with everything that's in me and everything that the scripture indicates, we are in a period called apostasy. The word apostasy simply means a great falling away. 
Amen. Those who will uh, forsake the faith, those who have changed and moved away from the things that they were doing or had been doing or had believed, or even a whole country that fell away. When it used to be in God, we trust now. Amen. Or amen. We used to pray about everything. And when we took prayer out of school, that's called apostasy, to fall away from the faith, to fall away from the beliefs that brought us, that brought us to where we where we are. Uh, and then the next thing that we're waiting on in any given day, according to Jesus, it says, amen. We believe that the next event is called the rapture. The rapture, you will not find the word rapture in the Bible. It's not found nowhere in the Bible, but what it means is found in the Bible. In 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians and 1 Thessalonians is when Jesus comes back in the clouds as he promised, as he promised in Acts, as he promised in Matthew. He says when he comes back, the angel is going to blow the trumpet and the dead in Christ are going to rise first. And then those who are alive and remain unto the Lord shall be caught up. And so shall we forever be with the Lord. And so we believe that the rapture is when Jesus is going to bring, amen. God is going to tell Jesus, go ahead, go. No man knows the day or the hour. Jesus told us that. He said, Jesus says, no, I, I don't even know it. I go when my father says go, amen. So anybody who suggests they know when Jesus is going to return, uh, according to the Bible, is not telling the truth. The Bible says Jesus is going to come as the thief in the night, unexpected. So we don't know, maybe night, morning, noon, but we do know Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's coming back unexpectedly. And the rapture will take place instantaneously in a moment, in a twinkling of an eye. Amen. Just that quickly, we're going to discover how even uh, Jesus is going to take us from, uh, from time to eternity, from mortal to immortality from corruption to incorruption, uh, just that quickly. And then at the, at the rapture, amen, after all the saints have been caught up and the dead in Christ have been raised uh, into heaven, then I believe according to other teachings and all my teachings of my professors in school and my study of the word of God, I believe the rapture ushers in the period of tribulation. The tribulation, according to Daniel chapter nine, will last a period of seven years. The first three and a half years is that of an utter destruction, pain, suffering, uh, problems. The second three and a half years called the Great Tribulation would be marked with the, the upcoming and the arrival of the Antichrist or the beast and the beast, Antichrist and the beast uh, that will come and will demand that anyone that desires to have benefits on earth must worship the antichrist and or the beast the mark of the beast will have to be put upon the head or upon the hand of anyone who desires to have market in the this is tribulation after the church has been gone the antichrist is going to put his picture inside the temple the temple is not built yet but we believe in the name of Jesus, amen, that everything is in place for the building of the temple in Jerusalem. And the Antichrist is going to put his picture in that temple and demand everybody to worship him. But the Bible, we're going to be talking about it in Revelations. God says anybody who receives the mark of the beast are going to receive a greater damnation, a greater destruction. So I want to suggest to anyone, if you happen to miss the rapture, don't miss the rapture, receive Jesus Christ now. Uh, but if you happen to miss the rapture, amen, do not receive the mark of the beast. We discovered, as we talked about, we're going to talk about now, in the opening of the fifth seal, that there are some who did not receive the mark of the beast and their souls, amen. These are the souls that are underneath the altar, protected by God. These are the ones who have lost their lives. They were martyred. They were martyred because of their belief, because of their testimony, because they refused to receive the mark of the beast or to worship the Antichrist. Uh, they believe God. And so that's the fifth. Let me tell you, he said, what do you, what do you mean the fifth seal? I'm glad you asked. Amen. Uh, while you're in Revelations chapter six, the entire uh, sixth chapter deals with a number of uh, events that happen. While John, the revelator, amen, not John the Baptist, but John the beloved, John the disciple, 
Amen. John, the disciple, all the other disciples were uh, martyred. They, all of the, they were uh, either hung upside down, beheaded, tarred and feathered. John was banished to an isle called Patmos where the Holy Spirit gave him what we are now viewing and witnessing as the word of God, the prophetic promises of what's yet to come. God, God told John, the angel told John, he said, right, write what the spirit says to you, write what you see, everything you see, write it down. And so that you can see it. And so we're reading what John wrote about what he saw in heaven and what the elders and the beast and amen, the angels shared with him, amen, about the end of time. So now the tribulation begins, remember, at the rapture, when all the saints have gone, then we believe that the Bible says in Revelation chapter five, that God who sits upon the throne and amen, the 24 elders all around the throne of God and the beasts, amen, that are there, the four beasts, the angelic beasts, amen, the angelic beasts. And it's important, I'm going to share some other stuff with you. Uh, amen, that we need to get some stuff because a lot of people get science fiction, but a lot of our science fiction are based on Bible facts. Amen. Faith facts. Amen. There are a lot of other things. Even when we talk about extraterrestrial, I'm going to talk about all this stuff. I want to have a special Bible study at some point. And y'all, y'all, I, I really want you to come because I want to have it in person so you can answer and you can ask questions because some people worried about aliens and abductions and this and that. Uh, and, and should, should we believe, should we believe in aliens and should we believe in, in outer space? Should we believe? I'm glad you asked. And I want you to keep it in your mind because we're going to have a special Bible study on the facts of extraterrestrial beings and their existence on earth. Uh, is it true or not true? Uh, but right now we're still in this study, the study of Jesus loosening. Because nobody, when God, the father who sat on the throne, he had in his hand, he had a book that was written on both sides, inside and out. And it was sealed with seven seals. And had, no one was able to loose the seals, but the lamb that had been slain that was on the right hand of the father. And when the right hand, amen, the father who had the book in his hand gave the book to the lamb, amen. No one was able before then to open the book or even to look on it. But when Jesus, the lamb of God, took the book and began to loosen the seals, this is when we discover, amen, in Revelations chapter six. Y'all caught up yet? Revelations chapter six, he saw the first seal, amen. I saw the lamb of God in verse one, open one of the seals. And I heard as it were the noise of thunder and one of the beasts, one of the four beasts, that around the presence of God he said, come and see. And I saw and beheld a white horse and he that sat on him had a bow. And then he moved on in verse three, he said, I opened the second seal and the beast said, come and see. And a horse that was red and power was given him. That's verse number four. Verse number five says, and I opened the third seal and I heard a third beast come and see and behold and lo, a black horse and him that sat upon it had a pair of balances. Amen. And then in verse number seven, he says, and when he had opened the fourth seal, I heard the voice of the fourth beast saying, come and see. And I looked and beheld a pale horse and his name that sat upon him was death and hell followed him and power was given over unto him over the fourth part of the earth to kill with sword and with hunger and with death and with the beast of the earth. Amen. That was the loosening of the four seals and the four riders. But then we talked about on uh, Friday, last Friday, about the fifth seal. And that's verses 9 through uh, 11. And the fifth seal says, and uh, I look and beheld. And when he had opened the fifth seal, John says, I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God. Amen. And for the testimony that they held. So under the altar were those who had a special place that were prepared for them. They had not yet received their white robes. Amen. They had not yet been a part of the group. They were not a part of the group that was raptured. Amen. And raptured and given. Amen. But these that were under the altar, we discovered are these who, amen, would not receive the mark of the beast. They would not receive. And because of their testimony and they held to their testimony, they were martyred. But amen, 
God says, hold on. Amen. Their souls were underneath the altar. He says, just rest a while until the rest of your soldiers, the rest of the believers who got to be, who got to be martyred like you until they come. But they were given just like the other saints. Amen. They were given white, white robes. Amen. Uh, they were given white robes. And so now not only that, we see that he says, yeah, for a while and uh, until they be fulfilled. Now we're at verse number 12. Number 12, and it begins our discussion for tonight about the loosening of the sixth, the sixth seal. Seal, the sixth seal. Revelation chapter six, verses 12 through 17. These are some amazing passages of scripture. Let's take a look. Let's read it. And the heaven departed as a scroll. Well, excuse me, in verse number 12. And I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake and the sun became as black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth. Even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind and the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. And the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every freeman hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said unto the mountains and said to the mountains and to the rocks, Fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. <sighs> my God, my brothers and sisters, amen. This is an amen. We told you about all the other things that occurred in the loosening of the first four seals. Amen. The riders of the horses. Uh, and the fifth seal was a reprieve of some of such where we see under the altar, the souls of the saints. But here, the sixth seal, and there are only seven seals. So we're coming now, amen, moving into the sixth and then uh, to the final seventh seal that we'll get to when we get to the eighth chapter. Uh, but the sixth seal deals with some things that are amazing. Uh, amen. It deals with uh, things that we see that are seismic. And then there are some things that we see that are cosmic, cosmic, uh, seismic, meaning amen. Uh, and, and especially here in California, all across the state of California, we shared with you before uh, that there are those who measure the movements of the earth, uh, the plates and fault lines. Uh, amen. And they can tell the tremors in any given day in the United States of America, particularly in California, you're liable to have uh, multiple small earthquakes and aftershocks every single day. Uh, that's been happening and they've been intensifying over the past, uh, I don't know how many years, but can I tell you, even what uh, you cannot feel, uh, the earth is still shaking, but there, there are some earthquakes that are coming. We You hear them talking about, and oftentimes I, when I was growing up, they used to talk about the big one is coming. So that's why I want to talk about the sixth seal. In the sixth seal, the Bible says, and when he had opened the sixth seal, when Jesus, the Lamb of God, there was a great earthquake. Uh, earthquakes have been used in the Bible in many different situations and many different settings. Uh, amen. It was an earthquake uh, that when Jesus Christ was on the cross and while he was on the cross, the Bible says from the sixth to the ninth hour, amen, while he hung there on the cross and when he hung his head and he died and he gave up the ghost, the Bible says the earthquake and folk, dead folk start showing up around town. When Jesus was in, in the grave, amen, in the grave, amen, it was, amen, early Sunday morning, the Bible says the earth quaked and it shook, amen, when they rolled a stone away. Uh, there are many different occurrences throughout the scripture where we see the manifestation of seismic activity, but none of it can be compared to what's going to be expected in eschatology 
The Bible says in number 12, when the opening of the sixth seal, you've been talking about the big one, the big one. They always talk about California. They're afraid of the earthquakes in California. The amen. But I want to tell you when the earthquake comes, when the big one, the one in verse number 12, it won't just be California. Uh, amen. The Bible, listen what the scripture says. Not only uh, when the head opened the sixth seal and lo, there was a great earthquake. And then it talks about the sun. I won't talk about the size, the seismic part yet. And then it talks about even a little further on what happened. He says, even the mountains that got shook up. Amen. The mountains were moved. That's a big earthquake that'll move a mountain. Amen. Out of its place that will move islands out of their place. The scripture says, amen, uh, that the earth is going to rock so that it's going to change even the geography. Amen. Uh, it's going to change the, the position, the, the geological position uh, of where things are, rocks and mountains of hills and valleys. Uh, now that's going to be some shaking. Amen. It, it, we talk about furniture moving. Amen. God's going to move some mountains with this earthquake. Uh, amen. Verse 12, he says, in the opening of the sixth seal, there was a great earthquake. And not only that, that's that's seismic, seismology, seismic, but there's going to be some cosmic uh, anomalies. There are going to be some cosmic, uh, amen, uh, things that no one ever anticipated or expected. Let me share some of them with you in, in the opening of the sixth year. We know it's going to be great earthquake. It's going to be shaken like never, never, you've never been shook up before. But the Bible says even the sun the sun became black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. Let me tell you, no one, whenever the sun become black as hair, that means the sun went out. Amen. Or the sun has been completely covered. And without the sun, we have no source of heat, no source of energy. We're talking about solar power. What you going to power with? Amen. If you ain't got the sun and you're trying to guide, you can have all the solar panels you want. But when the sun blacks out, there be there's no power. Amen. When the sun blacks out, amen. I don't care what kind of heat you got. Amen. It's the, you, there's no light when the sun, all you have is the moon. And now here is the moon is going to be like blood. Amen. And the sun became as black as sackcloth of hair and the moon became as blood. I mean, in the sixth seal when it opens and not only that, can we stay with the cosmic the cosmic and and there are so many things that I wish I was uh, a man uh, had enough science uh, enough uh, enough astrology or enough physics to be able to understand and explain to you all the details uh, amen but I do know that the Bible declares in verse thirteen in verse thirteen and the stars of heaven fell to the earth even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. Uh, that says a lot of the things that talks to me is several, several things, the possibility, there's a possibility of meteoric meteor showers. And we know that to be the case because meteors have fallen to the earth. They're actually proof and presence all in New Mexico and other places. There are holes in the ground that we have determined that they have come as a result of the history of the earth, where there is a collision between cosmic pieces, pieces of the atmosphere falling with inside of the earth's atmosphere. Uh, amen. Things falling out of space. So let me tell you, it says, and the stars of heaven fell unto the earth, even as a fig tree cast with their untimely fig. And that's a very dangerous thing when a star falls to earth, when there is a, a comet, a comet usually passes by, but a meteor usually, uh, amen, a meteor usually enters into the atmosphere and breaks up into small pieces and lands into different places. But can I tell you, I believe not only not only uh, is it when it says stars or things that fall from the sky, I believe even the possibility, amen, and using my e, um, my evangelical or amen, uh, es uh, using my privileges, uh, ecclesiastical, ecclesiastical privileges as a preacher, uh, I would probably even suggest that some of these things that we call far stars or meteors or comets that fall to the earth, some of them might be our very own satellites. Sooner or later, what goes up must come down. Amen. And now there are things and not only must come up, must come down, but I want to speak with reality that a lot of people probably don't realize and it would not surprise me. And I have suspicions that there are uh, special weapons in space. 
when I say special weapons, I mean nuclear and all this thing, but people, amen, you don't have to move and they're worried about how to get to certain places in here. I believe, I just believe that there are not just stars that are going to fall to the earth, but I believe of the possibility of other pieces of debris or pieces of weaponry that will be falling to the earth from the sky that would appear like, amen, Chicken Little said, the sky is falling, the sky is falling. The Bible says in verse number 13, at the opening of the sixth seal, the stars fell, stars of heaven fell to the earth, even as the fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed, amen, uh, the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together. And every mountain and every island were moved out of their places. Uh, I'm telling you, in the sixth seal, we get ready because close to the seventh seal, this is all how it's coming to a conclusion, how God is bringing to the force. And I believe there's still, oh my God, this not even touch the top of the service, the surface. If you continue to study with us each Friday night, study with us as we get into the word of God, I want to share with you some stuff that seems like science fiction, but is actually faith. And it's actually Bible facts. Now, listen, uh, not only that verse number 15, and then we'll, we'll get ready to close it out. Verse number 15 says, even the kings of the earth and the great men and the rich men and the chief captains and the mighty men and every bondman and every free man hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountains and said unto the mountains and rocks, fall on us. Let me stop right there. Verse number 15 said they every free everybody rich man free man kings of the earth great men rich men captains mighty men slaves everybody went and hid themselves in the dens and in the rocks of the mountain uh, that seems logical amen when people are looking for a amen a place of uh sheltering from things that are falling from the sky you want to be in a cave or you want to be an underground shelter or you want to be in a place so everybody's going to be looking for a place where they can be protected. Check this out, y'all. Verse number 15, they was running to, uh, to the places where they can be protected from the stars that were falling from heaven. But can I tell you, after a while, amen, after a while, they, they, they preferred, amen, the mountains falling on them to the alternative source that's coming as well. Let, what do you mean, pastor? Well, let me tell you. Verse number 16, 15, the kings and the mighty men, the rich men, all of them were hiding in mountains and in caves. They hid themselves in dens and in the rocks. But verse 16 says, and they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that sitteth on the throne and from the wrath of the lamb. Uh, and so were they saying, rather than us hiding, amen, from that, from the calamities of the sky falling in on us. At the point when they realize that it's time for us to face God and we didn't do what we should have. We know we didn't, uh, amen, live the way he told us to live. And so what they are saying now, their their plea of protection has become now a plan of suicide. They said, please, and they said to the mountains and the rocks, fall on us and hide us from the face of him that's on the throne. Amen. And from the wrath of the lamb. He says, now I'd rather, they, they, they got a lot of sense. Hey, I'd rather have the rocks and the mountains fall on us to, and for us to stand in the presence of God, knowing that we have not received him, knowing that we have rejected his promises, rejected his commandment, lived a lifestyle as though God did not exist. But let me tell you, at the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. All right, that's verse number 16. They was praying, let the mountains fall on us so we can flee from the wrath of God. For verse number 17, for the great day of his wrath is come. And who shall be able, oh, good God Almighty, who shall be able to stand? Can I tell you the great day of his wrath has come? That's after the opening of number six. That begins, it's going to take it to a whole nother level. And that's what I'm going to tell you what we're doing. Uh, amen. Right now in our stream, what we're doing in vacation Bible school, what we're doing in Sunday school, what we're doing in morning worship, what we're doing every time we meet together. Jesus is getting us ready for that great day. Oh, what great day is that? The great day of his coming, the great day of his wrath. Jesus is getting us ready for that great day. Oh, who shall be able to stand? Well, I want to tell you, you can stand and you'll be able to stand if you receive Jesus Christ 
is your Lord and personal Savior. You can't wait until that day. Amen. When the rocks are falling and when the sky is falling, and when the earth is shaking and say, Lord, have mercy, save my soul. You got to do it while the blood is running warm in your veins. Amen. Don't wait through the tribulation. Get caught up in the rapture. You don't want to have to go through, amen, martyr, martyrdom. You don't want to have to be crucified and executed just to, you know, to get to heaven. You can receive Jesus Christ now and be caught up. Amen. Be taken away to be raptured with the saints of God when Jesus comes. And you don't have to be a part of this experience on earth as those who will experience it when the sky is falling. Amen. When the earth is shaking, when the horsemen begin to ride, you need to receive Jesus Christ. So I bid you, I encourage you. You say, how do I do it? I'm glad you asked. If you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, that Jesus Christ is the son of God. He was born of a virgin, that he lived. He died on Calvary for your sin and my sin. And if you believe that and you said, Lord, come into my heart and save my soul. And you believe and you says, Lord, I want you to save me in the name of Jesus. Father God, I know I'm a sinner and I want to, I need to be saved. Come into my life and save my soul. And you do it in Jesus' name. And whosoever calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. So I encourage you. We baptize real soon. I told you next Friday, we're going to be baptizing. You can be baptized Friday or even sooner than that if you so desire. But what we want you to do is say, I need to be saved. So call Israel, call Grace Temple and say, I pray with Pastor Howard. I receive Jesus Christ. I want to be a member of grace. I want to be a member of Israel. I want to receive Jesus Christ and we'll be happy, so glad to help. As we are growing in Christ, you can come grow with us as we learn more about what God would have us to be and what God wants us to do. I thank you for your time tonight. Everybody, y'all been so good uh, and appreciate it. Continue to pray for us. And remember, Sunday is Communion Sunday. Amen. Communion Sunday. And we want to ask all of our soldiers to please be with us, uh, continue to uh, stay with us and join us in all of the uh, different events that we have coming up. Thank you again. Thank you, Robin uh, Spencer. Thank you, Ethel Fitzgerald, Tiffany. Uh, bless you, Tristan, Freddie Moody, Van Easy, Arlena Brazier. Amen. Thank you so very much, Mary. Uh, amen. Mary Parnell. Thank you so very much, JJ. In the name of Jesus. Amen, Michelle. So many of our saints of God who are watching, Edwina. Thank you all so very kindly, both on Grace page, on Israel's Facebook page, and also on YouTube. God bless y'all for taking time. Uh, to join us. And I really thank you. Uh, amen. Continue to pray for us that God will bless us. Then don't forget to sow your seeds. Sow your seeds, your tithes, your gifts, your capital campaign, your scholarship, love offering, whatever it is that you have so moved. Let me tell you, this is a good place to sow your seed because God will take that seed and produce a plant where you got more seeds to give inside all the fruit that he's going to bless you with. Amen. You can do it all kinds of ways. You can do it online and you can do it on in person. You can do it by mail. You can do it by mobile on the phone. You can do it. Amen. On the computer at home. There are so many ways you can support the kingdom of God. We just want you to pick one or two of them. Amen. And do as God has so blessed you. God keep you again. Happy birthday. Happy anniversary to all those who are celebrating. And may the spirit of God go before you this weekend. Amen. Be safe. May he guide you throughout every day of your life. May he cover you with his grace and may he fill you with his spirit. Amen. May his blessings, uh, amen, rest, rule, and abide with us. Hence now and forevermore. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Amen. God keep you. I'll see you Sunday morning. Sunday morning in worship.
Amen. We're going to sing happy birthday to you.